To integrate React Router into your React.js project, I broke down the process into two steps. In step one, we're going to create the scaffolding, meaning we're going to create the menus, the pages, those elements that make up the page. And in step two, we're going to be showing the views. We're going to create the route logic and linking everything around so we can view those pages. So let's get started. In step one, we're going to create the scaffolding. We're going to create the menus and the pages. We will be sanctioning our app with a header, a body, and a footer. So take a look at this 10,000 foot wireframe diagram. It shows you how we're going to be sanctioning our app. This is a typical way to sanction an app. And But in addition to that, we're going to add another element. We're going to add the drawer. The drawer menu the, it will get open from the side, so we can open it from the left or from the right, and it will include icons and links. This is, again, it's a typical way that you create an app. You see it many times on mobile apps or even on the web when uh, you have limited the uh, um, device size, and we're going to sanction our app that way. To get started, we're going to be using Create React App. Create React App, it's an opinionated library that was created by Facebook, that what it does, it basically it made some determination for us and it's making the development of React application easier. But what we're gonna be using is, is a template that I created that already include some additional opinionated libraries on top of it. It's gonna include already the React 17. It's gonna have, for type checker, it's gonna have TypeScript. It's gonna have pre-processors already ins installed, state management, CSS, framework, the material UI we're going to be using, it's already going to be installed, the style component, all of that's going to be installed, and you can um, look more into detail about this library in the link that I'm attaching here, and you can learn more about it in the article and in the course that I have here on um, Udemy, so you can learn more about this library if you like, but it's just saving you the time of installing all the libraries, but you could do it yourself one by one. Now to get started, we're going to create a new Create React App project using that template, and we're going to name it Exercise 1. So just type in this command, yarn, create, react, app, exercise 1, and then the template, which is must-have library, I call it MHL, must-have libraries. And then once the installation is complete, then we can start the project and see it working. So go ahead, stop the video, download uh, create your project and start your project and compare it to what where I'm at right now. Now that the installation is complete, we can change directory into our exercise one folder and use the yarn start to start the project. That yarn start calls a script inside of our packages.json file and that um, that script open up a local server and we can view our app. Now if you want to learn more about this whole process and under the hood as I said I have another course I'm gonna put the link right here so you can follow this link and take the other course if you want to learn more and dig more under the hood I don't want to dig too much under the hood here because again you can either take the course or read the article that I'm attaching here and you can have lot of details about how it was built and what's under the hood but what we're gonna do is the first step we're gonna change the app that TypeScript and we're gonna just show a div that will output app page instead of the default create react app welcome page that we got now we will then use that page inside of our router later um, when we set our router so the new app TypeScript will look like this as you can see here, what we're doing, we're just um, cutting the section of what's already existing and we're adding a div that just shows the app page. Now, since the, our index.typescript component is already including the app subcomponent, if we, when we run the yarn start, if you're not running it already, and you go back into your localhost 3000, you'll see that our index, basically our index page that includes the app page, now is just showing us the app page, the content that we replaced it with. 
Now we will be using the generate React CLI library. It's included already with the create React app, must have libraries to create our pages and layout elements. So it's gonna speed up our development to create we're going to use it to create our header, our footers, and our pages. So with the use of Generate React CLI, using the custom template that are already set for you, you can just run the following command while in the project root folder. So we just run npx generate react CLI. Then we're going to use a component that's going to use the component template. And it's going to use, we're going to call it footer. And the type is going to be layout, meaning it's going to put it in the layout folder. The output will give you the component that, were cre that was created for you. So it generates the SAS, the GEST, test file, and the component file. For instance, for the footer component, you can see here the output. It shows us that it created three files for us inside of the source layout footer folder. And one again, one was for the SAS file, one was for the test file, one was for the actual component. Now, if you open the source layout folder inside of your IDE, Integrated Development Environment, you can see the files that were created for us. Take a look. We see the footer, the footer test JS file, and the footer component. Now, the project is set for us to initial testing JS file. So we learn you know, if you want to learn more about Jest and how it all works, we, I have it in, a, um, in the previous course how I set it up. And you can go and uh, um, read the article that I'm attaching here as well, that I have on Medium. So, in order to, um, there's certain things that we want to do in order to check that our project is going to pass a quality uh, coding certain quality coding conditions. For example, this project already set with ESLint, so it's going to do a code analysis and flag any programming errors, bugs, and stylistic error or any other suspicious constructs. Then we have the just setting testing. The just testing is already set for us, and it ensures that our test run and the, it tests uh, and it passes all the tests. And then the third one we're going to be running is the format. So we're going to ensure that our code is formatted using the best practices we set. So in this project, it's set with the Airbnb styles, which is the, the standard for React applications. So it's going to check and fix any formatting errors for us. So to do all of that, we're going to be using the run scripts that are inside of our packet that JSON file. So to do that, we're just running three commands. We're going to use the yarn format, yarn lint, and yarn test. When we run those, we want to see that we get the result we want. Now, if there's any simple linting issues, for example, spacing, if you run the yarn lint minus minus fix, that's going to automatically fix, fix those errors for you. So there's a file, the ESLint TRC file, that we set all of our formatting conditions. And then when we run it, it's going to fix it automatically for us if we run it with the minus minus fix or check if there's any errors. So you can compare the results that I have um, with your results when you run the project. And you can see that it's passed the test, it passed the lint, and it passed the format. Take a look. For the header component, we're going to do a similar process. We're going to create the header layout component. We're going to run the following command to generate the components file. npx generate react CLI component with the name of the component, which is header, and the type, which is layout. Now, if you open up the template file, you can see that it sets with react.pure component. So we're going to add the header and the footer to the render JS jsx output so if you can if you open up our um, our header um, what we want to do is we want to change it so and ensure that it returns just header so look at the render um, jsx 
and it's just going to return the name of the component, component, which is header. You can see here that I'm using pure component because we don't need to utilize some specific hooks. So it's always better in terms of performance to use the pure component when you don't, when you don't need the specific hooks that are coming with the React component. Now, in our app, I'm including different pages that are common for a site that sells content. For example, I'm including a contact um, page, books, courses, coaching, and others. You can change those pages if you like. Those are just suggestions just so we can create our app. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the NPX with the Generate React CLI, and we're going to add the component one by one. So take a look. I'm just going to copy and paste it one by one, all the different components that I'm adding. And you can add as many as you want. I'm just adding the default one for our app. Now, let's create that. And by the way, if you, um, if you want all the codings and all those components that I'm creating, the eBooks that come attached with this course has all the content and everything I'm showing you in this course. So you can just pause that video and look at that ebook and you can copy paste it into your terminal and follow this tutorial so you can actually see the same result as I'm getting here. Take a look. Now that we created all those pages for sanity check you can run the lint and test it. So now if we do the same what we did before with the yarn lint and yarn test you're going to see that our test suite got 15 pass tests, the lint pass, everything passed so far. This is a good practice to do every time that you add a feature or you change, you make a significant change. It's really good practice to, add, to run the format, the lint, and the test to make sure everything still passed. Now, if you open those pages component, as you saw in the course, I have my template file example, we said that already include a TypeScript class component with React router and a hook to the path name and the React route. What does it do? This actually gives us, I'm extracting the name of the page and I'm displaying it. So I'm using the React route hook in order to extract the path name and the name of, the, of my class. Now, when we import the React router DOM and then using the hook, we can access the URL location of the current browser location to display the name. For example, if the URL would be http slash localhost 3000 slash home, we can extract the home variable from the React router using the prop history location path name then you can see at the end I'm putting a replace, I'm replacing the slash in case the user put home slash. So that's why I'm replacing the slash because the user can come to the home page, for example, using localhost slash home or local home, localhost slash home slash. So that's why we want to replace that, the last one. Now React router um, in this template class is ex extracting the page name from the history API on the React router using the hooks that are set up by the uh, React Route API. Now notice that on the interface class of the template, the interface needed to extend the route component props for this um, props history to work. So we need to include that in, in our interfaces.